Hello, and in this uh, screencast for Apache ISIS, I want to talk to you about the command and audit modules that we have on the Apache ISIS add-ons website. And uh, these two uh, go together often. Commands are the cause of changes and uh, audit entries are the effect of the changes. So we often put the two together. Uh, and as you may, may be reading from the description here, commands are also useful for doing profiling and also to enable background uh, commands, asynchronous commands as well. So lots of good stuff there. Let's have a look to see how we configure this. So on the, uh, the command um, GitHub page, all this stuff is on GitHub. We've got lots of stuff, lots of screenshots and so forth. I'll let you look at those at your leisure. But we're going to spin down to the how-to. And um, I'm going to configure uh, the modules to run against the simple app uh, that is generated by the simple app archetype, which I have previously run in this console. And indeed, I've loaded into my uh, IDE, into IntelliJ. So back to the uh, configuration for the command module. And the first thing we need to do is add a dependency in our Maven POM. So we can plonk that into here. All this stuff is uh, released onto the central Maven repo. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to update the package prefix to tell ISIS where to find the various um, project uh, services, I mean to say, that are within the module. So we do that, comma. Let's make that nicely aligned. OK, so that's that bit. Um, and then we've also got a couple of services to explicitly uh, register as well. Um, these are contributions services. So they're going to update, uh, modify, if you like, the user interface. That's the reason that these are um, have to be specified manually. Um, that's the convention. If the services are going to impact the user interface, we'll give you the control to choose whether you want them to appear or not. So that is that. Um, now, what else do we have to do? Let's check my notes here. So that's the configuration. If I were to run the application up, we wouldn't see anything because commands act upon um, on actions. So let me go to my simple object class and I've got just a simple property here. What I'm going to do is write a quick action and to save you watching me typing, I'm going to copy and paste this in. And then notice that this has been annotated already with at command. OK, so that's good. And um, the last thing I need to do is um, this will now create commands, but we won't be able to see them. So what I've just got as well as a little bit of a snippet of code here is I'll have a little additional service. Here's the code for it that will just uh, let me query um, the command repository and show any actions that have been um, sorry actions any commands that have been uh, created and persisted so with a tiny bit of look that's all good okay so I think that's everything yeah I think so let's try this out then just to say that um, we're configured here to run with a uh, in-memory database so um, we should be getting new objects there's the command object being created as well as the simple object but when every time I run the application we'll be starting afresh okay so let's um, let's in fact start here this was from the last time I ran this thing up so we can create an object and so let's have a look. Here's the simple object. Um, here's the action that I wrote. Here's the service that's providing a contributed collection of commands. And so far, there are no commands. So I'm now going to call this action. And we can see that as a result of me invoking that action, we've got a command that's been persisted. I can go and have a look at the details of that. And um, we can see that it's captured the argument bar. Uh, we've also got it in an XML format. Uh, that XML format is what's uh, parsed if we run uh, background services to invoke these actions in the background. And some of the profiling information, you can see I'm running this at half past midnight. 
and um, it took five milliseconds to execute and we've got other little convenient fe convenience features like being able to get back to the object that we invoked the action upon so that was the cause of a change um, and of course the, the change actually occurred on the on the object itself okay so let's now go and have a look at um, auditing going to work in a rather similar way let me go back to my uh, GitHub page. This is the one for the audit module and again I'm going to go spinning through looking for the how-to and uh, you'll have deja vu as I copy this stuff in. It is as, as I say quite similar the way this is done. So we're going to paste the dependency for the audit module in here and uh, let's just import the changes while we need to, that's just IntelliJ updating its class path um, then almost identically we're going to tell ISIS to go looking in an additional package for some new services coming in from the audit module and then again almost identically we've got a service to go here I know actually there's a typo, I'm going to just fix that here and update the readme after I finish this screencast. So that's that done. Same thing, we won't be able to see any audited entries unless we have a little service. So a bit more copy and paste, if you just bear with me for two secs. Paste all that stuff in. And I want that guy. And uh, anything else to be done oh yes uh, well we need to also indicate that we want our simple object entity to be audited and I think that is it let's see how we get on as I say we're starting a fresh new database so we'll have to load the fixtures up again just to set some sample data I can see some new tables have been created which looks good so uh, let's go to this guy let's uh, go back to the home page let's run in our fixtures and we've now got two contributed action uh, collections for commands and audit entries and in fact we've already got an entry for the audit table um, because this is kind of representing the instantiation of the creation of this uh, simple object. So let's now do the same thing as we did last time. We will change a value that will create a command and also an audit entry from foo to bar. And if I drill into the command, we can see um, that not only is this the, the details of the command, but we can also see that, we, that we've got access to the, um, the audit entry as well and there could be several ob uh, properties that might have changed in this case of course there was just one and any other and then I can spin into the audit entry and I can and these things are keyed in by this unique GUID a transaction ID and back to the command again and so on and so forth so there you go I hope that's given you a, a, a view about uh, the command and auditing um, you know there was one more thing I was going to just mention very briefly let's just do another update here um, let's change to bar 2 and then yeah this is the tiny little thing I mentioned about profiling as well so if I go here we can see there's a duration and um, and I can look at the uh, the averages and and so forth all that kind of good stuff but all this stuff is being persisted into a database and one of the pieces of information that's captured is a member identifier so effectively you can imagine us doing queries whereby we could look at um, effectively average stats for invoking a given uh, action based upon this member identifier so that's the profiling side of of commands okay hope that was all useful for you and uh, please give it a go